Did you sit there? Oh, I was about. <laughs> Is it switched on? Yeah, it's on. Welcome to the second episode, and hello again to all the fans we don't have yet. Um, off the back of last week's episode, where we were just talking about anxiety and kind of trying to open up about it, and you know the things I've maybe been doing, which I briefly touched on to help tackle the anxiety I've been dealing with. This week we're just going to talk about the... What the fuck is going on? Positives that have came out of being in lockdown, um, kind of how closer people seem to be getting or like wanting to be getting, um, communities that are building and just kind of like things we found that have been quite good um, between the family who I live with and us but yeah no it's been quite nice really I mean <clears throat> since it's all kind of stemmed off me opening up to you more and then that's kind of fed into kind of me spending more time with you in the living room a little bit depending on if you're watching something half decent and then just doing daft things like when we were cleaning out the garage the other day, which didn't need doing. It was basically it, it needed doing. It it needed doing. Um, it's a an older person thing when you know that you've got these jobs that you should be doing, but you never quite seem to have the time to do. Um, well, now there's no excuse, um, and there was no excuse for Alex not to help me because he wasn't going anywhere. He had nothing really to do. But, but it was quite funny because we found boxes of things that I forgot were even there, like daft hats and old 80s clothes that we had an impromptu dress-up session in. So it kind of just turned out to be a bit of a... Quite worrying though that <laughs> all my mum's old clothes which she had accumulated from the 80s seemed to fit me quite nicely. So I mean... And you actually suited them? Whether or not I'm just a strangely svelte, thin bloke or I've got a quite feminine... <laughs> don't cry, 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 don't cry. But um, no, no, I mean, like, that things like that, given other circumstances, if I was able to just leave the house, I'd have been like, I'd have ran a mile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the moment you went, right, let's, should we do something to the garage? I'd have been, oh, I'm going out. I'm going for a walk. Whereas I, I think I had me walk by that point. So. <laughs> cat walk, I think so, it was. So yeah, change it to a cat walk. But no, it was quite funny. Because that like, yeah, because like, again, normally just situations like that. I would have So just... it's just finding kind of the fun and normal mundane things, <clears throat> really. Um, so, you know, this is what we're doing. It's, you know, I'm trying to suggest other things as well, like trying a bit of decorating in one of the bedrooms because I've not decorated before ever. That went what, do you down... think, what do you think I'm going to suddenly well, be keen for it? No, but I don't know about you people out there. Do you mean um, you people? The, the, your fans uh, that you haven't got yet. <laughs> but Alex for a 28-year-old guy has no skills around the house all right that's it dishonor dishonor on your whole family make a note of this dishonor on you dishonor on your cow so he's talking about moving out getting his his own place and i dread to think how he'll cope because you wouldn't know how to knock <coughs> a nail in a wall um, you, oh, and i think i know how to hammer a nail in a wall but but the thing is this time where everybody's locked up should be a time where we we discover new skills that we've not got what, so we're going to dedicate time now like 30 minutes 
a day to learn how to hang a nail in a wall. Well, no, but decorate, maybe hang some. De- some what's the house going to look like by the end of this? Just a small bedroom. What, mine? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, to kind of one of the smaller bedrooms. You could, we could perhaps try, and then if it's a botch up, it doesn't matter. But at least we've tried, and it's something new that we've not had to do before. So <clears throat> this time being locked up. And it can be fun as well. Well, I told you, that I, I was saying to you the other day, other day, like, why don't we learn... Because I've been doing more yoga and, like, yeah. m- like mindfulness. And I was going to you, oh, why don't we tr- try and do that together? And you were going... <laughs> no, but then last night when we were out walking, we talked about it. And I said, well, yeah, because I can see how much better you've been since you've been doing that. It's really helped you. And you're much calmer, even kind of more calmer. Than, than pre the virus. I've tried yoga, meditation over the years. I've even, I went to India at one time and I tried it in the home of yoga, <coughs> Rishikesh in India, and I still couldn't do it. And the meditation, the more I was told to clear my head, more thoughts were actually rushing why, into my head. Why did you even go to India? To find myself. I thought there was a, a crisis, basically, a midlife crisis. Go and end you for a month. <laughs> no, but anyway, I found myself in Rishikesh, and you can't help but get taken over by it all because there's ashrams and, and you know, places, which are places where you do the yoga and everybody's walking around in orange robes and you kind of feel part of it and everybody's lovely and... Um, I would say it to you as well because like you don't do things by halves like it wasn't like I'm gonna go out there and just see what it's like like came back with photographs of herself in like full <laughs> orange robes like little bindi spot like on, on her head like in in a temple somewhere just like like this it's all it was it was it was incredible to see. But I still <coughs> couldn't focus on it. But now I'm going to do it and we're going to do the breathing and I'm going to see right. how I feel about it. So I'll revisit it and it might work this time. God, but I mean, I'm going to be minus the bindi spot and the orange robes. So how are you feeling now then because the last time we sat down and, and had this discussion last week um you were just coming out of feeling crap so a week on i feel like i mean i do feel loads better i think where some people have went down one week where it's like oh well i'm just gonna buy in loads of booze and just kind of like dive into like games or netflix and just kind of you know really relax I've went like the opposite way where I'm like cooking more. Um, I'm kind of again yoga, meditation. Like I'm keeping like you're more fit. Like I'm working out more. <laughs> just say <laughs> cause and <laughs> What are you doing? <clears throat> but yeah, like I'm, I'm just kind of like feel like healthier in myself. Stop looking at him. I'm opening I'm up. Sorry, I know. I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to open up. If the dog's doing something a bit more Sorry. fun then. <laughs> Carry on. I'm packing my bags. I had a very, very calm day into this. A bump in the road comes and she be sarcastic. So you're only... You're, it doesn't you matter now. I'm going back my shell. <laughs> So no, you are you are opening up, and it's it's really nice. Well, no, I just kind of feel healthy in myself. Like everything I'm doing alcohol is alcohol as well because well, yeah. we're, we're and I'm not drinking alcohol. Not that I, I've I've never drank at home anyway, but I'm not really <clears> missing it. Um, it's great waking up on a Sunday morning and not feeling heavy headed. Um, so I actually think that there's a lot of positives and, and I'm kind of quite enjoying it, to be honest with you. I actually am. I, I think I'm just enjoying being at what, home. Honestly with... though, what is he doing? I know. This is what we have to deal with. Back from a break, repairing the dog's nose. So, you were saying. 
I think that you're completely more aware of looking after your body yeah, yeah. and your mind and I think it's that that's getting you through it now, isn't it? And how Do you have the number for that bloke who took you around India? I think that's what I'm going to have to end up doing once this is all over. <laughs> in, in two weeks' time, he will be sat here with his orange robes and his symbols. How can we go around I North Dublin it. Street? <laughs> Clashing my symbols. <laughs> Shaved head. <laughs> Said, I mean, we're joking about it, but that's been your yeah, no, like lever really to help you. I've been fortunate. I've just kind of gone with it, taken it in my stride. I've, so I'm not worried about getting the virus. Uh, you know, we're doing everything that we're supposed to do. We're keeping our um, distance. We're not going out unnecessarily. Keeping your mittens washed. Exactly. Um, Whilst we're coping, we can't lose sight of the fact that there are people who, who won't be coping. Because yeah. um, it's hard, it's hard like, cause it's kind of like you want to kind of say, oh, well, let's impart some sort of positivity and, you know, things that will make you kind of feel better and deal with. But it's kind of like when you're kind of thinking about, you know, feeding yourself and feeding your family and, you know, keeping a roof over your head, given that, like, business and your job is on the line, like, it's hard to kind of... It's hard to, to, to process it all <clears throat> and make some, and try and remain positive. But for me, what I would say is, um, t talking helps, and I think this is the message that you're trying yeah. to get across is, open up, there is support and there's help out there for people, even if you think that there isn't. Just find somebody to talk to. Speak to Alex, speak to us, send a message. And we will try to help. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you are struggling, if you are out of work, speak to me, send me a message because I can help with employment advice. I work in recruitment. I can help you with CVs. Um, I might be able to help get you back into work, even if it's just for um, a short period of time until, you know, something crops up that... That, that's more in line with what you want to do. So so bear that in mind. Um, and as Alex said, just to point you in the right direction, you know, we both know people who have different skills. Uh, <laughs> and that's not Liam Neeson. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about how you're laughing about there. <laughs> we know people who have a particular set, set of skills. skills. <laughs> No, that tickled you, has it? Yeah. You're your own comedian and audience. <laughs> but in all seriousness, yes, speak <laughs> to us, send us a message. We will help. And, and just use Alex's experience from opening up as well because he never used to. And I think that it's really helped for you to, to open up to me yeah. because you're calmer and you're in a much better place. So it works. So try it. Thing is, as well, it's like again, it's the another ideal time to step out of your comfort zone and open up because, again, within the constraints of not being able to go out and do everything you normally would that would kind of help you calm down and relax, I've then had to kind of realise right, like I have to say something now, otherwise I've got nothing around me to kind of help me deal with my mental health. Because my creativity was dwindling and I couldn't go out and meet friends. So that then led me to kind of being like, well, if I don't say something to my mum, then God knows what's going to happen. Like, uh, you know, I, I didn't have an outlet really. So. And you, you, pay, <coughs> if you live at home with your parents. So even if you're FaceTiming them or whatever, they, they want to know how you're feeling. They want to help. And sometimes it's difficult as a parent to know you know how far you should pry into how somebody's feeling because you know I always used to either get the yes everything's fine you know why are you asking or you get the feeling that you're being nosy but we're not really it's because we're concerned and we want to know and we want to open up that conversation with you and um, uh, oh. but, but if I could just say there's nobody in the world who will help you more than your parents 
you know, they've got your best interests at heart, your well-being at heart, and they'll do anything that they can to help. And I've always thought that by opening up more, that I would add that burden of worry onto you because I know what you like. If I, I am if, a because if I if I go out with mates <clears throat> and I've not sent like a message or if you've tried to ring me and I've not replied. I'm already in a ditch dead somewhere. <laughs> like, I, I've either been ran over, murdered, killed, I've been in a car accident. I don't even drive, but I've been in a car accident. <laughs> like, but at but the same time... It's a parent <clears throat> thing. But at the same time, it's not felt like I've <clears throat> added more weight onto your worries. Because I was kind of thought, oh, as soon as I kind of open up, she's going to go to bed, she's not going to be able to sleep. Like, I know you don't sleep anyway. But it's not, I've, I've, not, I've not felt like I've passed something on to you that's like, made things worse for you it, it, it did you know it it's a relief to actually have those conversations because then i know that the worst thing is is not knowing how you're feeling and knowing that there's something wrong but knowing also that you can't prize it out of you you've you've got to be ready to actually have that conversation so it, it is worse knowing that there's something wrong and yet knowing that you're not offloading mm. so at for me it's uh, i feel a hundred percent happier knowing that you're talking and knowing that i can help sometimes i can't sometimes i say the wrong things um but, but it helps me knowing that you're not just sat there brooding on something so for me as a parent what i would say to you all is just open up and think about how your parent might be feeling as well, you know, because they will be worrying about you. To be fair, I've never considered that it's more annoying for you that you know there's something wrong yeah. and I'm not telling you anything. Yeah. And parents I've always do. just kind of thought, oh, I'm just not going to say anything because it's just going to be a hassle and a faff on. Whereas then that's just irritating you more. Because as parents, and if, <coughs> if there are any parents listening to this, you'll know where I'm coming from and all you want to do is help you don't want to be a pain um, and I was like that with my own parents they would ask me and it was like oh you know you're prying you're being nosy but it actually isn't and you don't realize that until you have your own kids um, and you feel bad for how you were with your parents mm. because now you realise that they were probably worried, they wanted to help, but, you know, we know it all, don't we? As kids and young adults, we, we don't need that help, but actually we do. So, so just bear that in mind from a, a, a parent. No! What are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! Just do it! What, what other nice, lovely things have we got out of this? Well, I would say get into the garage, see what you can dress up in, yes, have a definitely. laugh, or go, in, go into your mother's wardrobe, just try a few clothes on, they might suit you. Um, but, but just find, look for... The, the funny, your, positive yeah, things. Force yourself and, into situations with like the people you're with. Like like I, decorating. Or, or not. Make a TikTok. We're, we've been talking about it with Sadie that we're going to get you to do one. Oh yeah. I'm going to be the butt of everybody's jokes, but hey ho. What's well, dancing? You like to dance? <laughs> You do? Whatever. So, so yeah, just look. Alex is right. Look for the fun things. Um, and, and, and use the time to get closer to the people that you're with as well. Mm -hmm. That's what I've enjoyed. Just sat uh, watching a movie or a documentary or whatever it is. Um, what did we watch the other day? The Big Short. Good film, good, would recommend. Yeah, absolutely. Would recommend. Yeah. Well, that's a thing though as well. It's like eat, not eat. Tiger King. <clears throat> Carol fucking Baskin. Carol fucking Baskin murdered her husband Donald. She wanted the money. She got the money. She got everything she wanted. I've got to draw the line at Tiger You've King. You've not seen it. I, I know. I've heard about it. But 
he, like again, like it, it was quite nice. I know that like when you're watching a film and you're not exactly talking or getting any closer to your parent or whatever, but it's nice to just be in the and same room. And we were eating the food that you'd cooked as well, which was lovely. Yeah, He's I was going to say, yeah. He's actually got some hidden skills there. Um, <laughs> hidden skills. <laughs> How's that funny? What? Where's your mind going there? Just back to the skills. I oh, particular. for Liam Neeson, yeah, well, <laughs> particular, oh, dear me. <laughs> but anyway, yes, yeah, so on that note, just look for the, the positives and what could or had previously perhaps been viewed as boring situations. Just make the most of it. Mm -hmm. The little things. All the best. Bye. <laughs> You're still laughing at that? That was a funny one. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Well, it was only you laughing. <laughs> and him. Let's see your nose, my little gorgeous boy. Mm -hmm.